appeared before the Congressional Committee to tell what I knew of activities which might lead to an attempt to set up a fascist dictatorship. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. President Bush signed a formal agreement that will end the United States as we know it. And he took the step without approval from either the U.S. Congress or the people of the United States. The secret organizations of the world power elite are no longer secret. It's known as the Bilderberg Group. Could their objective be world domination? I'm Jim Tucker. I've chased Bilderberg for 30 years. I'll never give up the chase. Bilderberg plan for the whole world is nothing less than world government. I'm not comfortable with that at all. Who elected these guys to run the planet? They are the elitist. They feel they should run the world for their own selfish interests. Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. Bilderberg is making great progress toward a world government, and only an educated, informed public can stop them in their tracks. David Rockefeller admits in his own memoirs that he wants to destroy the United States. Right. He's a traitor! It's good to be back at the Council on Foreign Relations. As uh, Pete mentioned, I've been a member for a long time and was actually a director for some period of time. I never mentioned that when I was campaigning for re-election back home in Wyoming. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories. I need you to move off the property, please. Some shots were fired. There's Bilderbergers right there. The Trans-Texas Corridor is a vital part because we stop it here in Texas. We stop the new world order right here in Texas. This thing started here. And to save this country, we kill this damn thing here. chance for the president of the United States to carry out a phrase his father used and that is a new world order. Your new world order will fall. Yeah. Humanity will defeat you. The answer to 1984 is 1776. In the near future, Earth is dominated by a powerful world government. Once free nations are slaves to the will of a tiny elite, the dawn of a new dark age is upon mankind. Countries are a thing of the past. Every form of independence is under attack, with the family and even the individual itself nearing extinction. Close to 80% of the Earth's population has been eliminated. The remnants of a once free humanity are forced to live within highly controlled, compact, prison-like cities. Travel is highly restricted. Superhighways connect the megacities and keep the population from entering into unauthorized zones. No human activity is private. AI supercomputers chronicle and categorize every action. A prison planet dominated by a ruthless gang of control freaks whose power can never be challenged. This is the vision of the global elite, their goal. A program of total dehumanization where the science of tyranny is law. A worldwide control grid designed to ensure the overlord's monopoly of power forever. 
Our species will be condemned to this nightmare future unless the masses are awakened to the New World Order master plan and mobilized to defeat it. Erected by a secretive group, the Georgia Guidestones are a testament to the elite's plan for a world religion, global laws, with a global court and army to enforce it. And set in stone, it is written that the population never rise above 500 million. In this film, you will learn how our world is truly governed. You will see how highly secretive roundtable groups interlock to form a global intelligence network. This group has been steering planetary affairs for hundreds of years. Now in the final stage, they prepare for open world government. A goal tyrants throughout history have lusted after. Dr. Michael Kaufman is a published ecologist specializing in ecosystem research, forest ecology, and ecosystem classification. Dr. Kaufman played a key role in blocking the ratification of the Convention on Biological Diversity in the U.S. Senate. The concept of a new world order has been around for centuries. It's been receiving tremendous play over the last half of the 20th century. Uh, George Bush, the first senior president, George Bush, used it a lot in his speeches and really implies that he really wants to see a order in which we have a universal or a global type of governance in which every human being on planet Earth is ultimately responsible to policies that are being formulated at the international level. It is a big idea, a new world order. President Bush uh, said that the new world order was uh, in, in, in tune and that's what they were working for. The UN is part of that government. They're working right now very significantly for a North American Union. That's why there's a lot of people in Washington that don't care too much about our borders. They have a philosophic belief that national sovereignty is not important. It's also the reason I have made very strong suggestion that we need not be in the United Nations for our national security. It's really always the same. You go back throughout of all of history, the Roman Empire, the uh, Soviet Union, Hitler during the Nazism was always saying that it's going to create the utopia for the average person when in fact history always shows that it does exactly the opposite. Conquest and empire is as old as civilization. Babylon, Egypt and Greece. They all built empires in an attempt to rule the world. The Roman system at its peak dominated the known world. Complex governmental systems were developed to control diverse populations. During the period between the 15th and 19th century, new empires emerged and again waged war for supremacy. The nobility as well as the thriving merchant class were financed by a handful of private banks. Many of the great money houses would hedge their bets and finance both sides of a war. Sophisticated intelligence gathering networks gave the financiers a clear edge over the governments they were slowly gaining control of. On the 18th of June, 1815, agents of the British arm of the Rothschild family looked on as Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte fought desperately to save his army from the jaws of a British Prussian pincer attack. A Rothschild agent was able to get the news of Napoleon's defeat at the hands of Lord Wellington to Nathan Rothschild a full 20 hours before the news reached London. Nathan, the head of the British arm of the Rothschild family, put out the rumor to the London Stock Exchange that Napoleon had won the war. Stocks plunged by 98% and Rothschild was then able to buy up the entire British economy for pennies on the pound. When the news of Napoleon's defeat finally arrived, stocks soared. Britain was now the undisputed ruler of Europe, and Rothschild ruled England. The already dominant British Empire grew even more aggressive. Her troops and bureaucracy spread across the globe. 
The sun never set on Britannia's holdings. The banking cartel funded, in fact, since about 1800, they have funded both sides of almost every war. And of course, they're getting the interest off of the loans that they've given the various governments and the wars that they have actually helped stimulate and create. By 1900, Germany was a rising force and a leader of the Industrial Revolution. Uh, World War I, for instance, there was absolutely no reason to have World War I except that it was an ideal opportunity for the banking cartel to make a pile of money by funding both sides of that particular war. On June 28, 1914, the heir to the Austrian-Hungrian throne, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, was assassinated while traveling in a motorcade. The Black Hand, a Serbian secret society with connections to French and British intelligence, took credit. World War I had begun. Armaments companies financed by Rothschild-controlled banks in Germany, France, England, and Austria bankrolled all the factions. At least 20 million were killed in the war. It was a conflict so terrible the people vowed to never fight again. They dubbed it the war to end all wars. The question is, why did they want war? Well, first of all, is money and power. But secondly, they wanted to create the League of Nations. They had this in their plans all along, and as a consequence, once the war was over or about to be over, they began to formulate this idea of a League of Nations so this would never, ever happen again. Hundreds of years of practice made the British experts at hiding their empire behind puppet governments and councils. In the name of stopping all future conflicts, they proposed that countries would join a League of Nations. Their true intention was for the League to serve as a framework for world government. President Woodrow Wilson, who had spearheaded the establishment of the private Federal Reserve System in the United States in 1913, strongly supported the establishment of a League of Nations. Woodrow Wilson was a very naive president. He was basically a college professor that was grafted into this whole system. The League convened in Paris in 1919, but many nations recognized it as a threat to their sovereignty and refused to join. Frustrated by the U.S. Congress blocking the League of Nations, British intelligence, with the help of the Rockefeller family, set up the Council on Foreign Relations in New York City in 1921. The Council recruited the best and brightest of American life to support the growth of the Anglo-American Empire. The CFR's stated mission is to abolish all nation-states in favor of an all-powerful world government administered by a tiny elite. By 1930, the promoters of world government had split into two interlocking camps. The Fabian Socialists centered in London and the Fascist based in Italy and Germany. National Socialism will use its own revolution for establishing a new world order. Adolf Hitler. Supporters of the fascist in the United States and England believed that the military should be used to quickly transform the world into a new world order. All the more sophisticated practitioners of globalism stated that incrementalism was the sure path to world domination. Congressional Medal of Honor winner Major General Smedley Butler went public in 1934 exposing an attempt by the robber barons to launch a military overthrow of the United States. The war hero testified to the McCormick-Dickstein Committee